In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can put our to-do items into specific categories, and we're going to make use of headers in the table views, and we're also going to look at how we're going to implement deletion, both swipe deletion and via an edit item in the uh, navigation bar. So the first thing we're going to do now is when we're going to be supporting categories is we're going to create a new array as a property, which is just going to store the categories which are available. It's not going to be mutable, we're just going to have a set number of categories and we'll set them to start with. The user is not going to be able to edit them, but that's something that you can implement yourself if you want. So here in view to load, I'm just going to set the categories. And I'm just going to have two categories to start, home and work. Now each category is going to have its own section. So for, with the data, table view data source method, number of sections in the table view, we no longer have just one section. We're going to have however many categories there are. So from here we're going to return the count number of categories in that array. Now we're going to have to change a few other things too. For example, we're going to have to change how many rows are in each section because it's not just going to be all the items because some are going to be in one category, some are going to be in another. And same again, again in self row and did select row because it's no longer going to be the index path row we can access in the items array. It's going to vary because we're going to have multiple categories and that's going to be split up into different sections. So we're going to get, add in some helper methods to deal with accessing the data source. So again I'm just going to separate section by code off the program mark to I'll just call the section helper methods. So the first helper method we're going to have is going to give us all the items in the specific category. Makes sense since that's going to be a common operation we're going to do when we're just trying to display each section with all the items, to do items in the specific category. So the only parameter this uh, method needs is the target category, the one we're uh, looking for the items in, and it's going to return those items as an array. Fortunately, there's quite an easy way we can do this. Now, you remember earlier on that whenever we create a new item, or in this case, we're setting them to start with, all the item dictionaries has a key called category. And that obviously stores the category that that item is in. Now, what we can do, NSArray has a method, uh, which you can call on it, called filtered array using predicate, and which allows you to specify a predicate with a specific format to match items in the array. Now, I'll show you how that works. First, we're going to create our predicate, and we want the predicate to have a format where, because we all only want to match items where the category is equal to our target category. Our target category could be home, or it could be work, and this is our predicate. Now we want to use that predicate to filter our items array. This will retrieve us the items in the category. So we call on our items, on all of our items, we want the filtered array using this matching predicate. And then we can return these category items. That's the first of our helper methods done. Now the second helper method we're going to need, and this is going to relate to the number of rows in section, is to get the number of items in a specific category. And this is easy, it's just going to return an integer. And again, it takes one parameter, and that's going to be the target category. And it can simply call the other method and return its count. It can return the items in the category, and again, the target category, and how many there are. Because this is going to return an array, and we can just get the count number of items in that array. The next helper method we need is item index path, so that we can retrieve the item at a specific index path in cell for row. This is just going to return a dictionary because that's going to be the item in question, and it's going to take one parameter, and that's the index path we want to get the item for. Now, the first thing we need to figure out is what category this item will be in given this index path. And that turns out to be not such a difficult thing to do. We have our array of categories we created earlier, and the category this item is going to be in is just going to be the item in this array at the section this index path is at. So self.categories, we want to get the item at the index path section. So if the index path was in section zero, then it would get home, and if the index path was in section one, then the category would be work. And if you had another, if the section was two, then it would give you whatever your other category was, say shopping. Now that we have the category for the item, it's quite simple. We can get all the items in this category, 
using our previously created helper method, items in category. And then we can get the specific item we want. That's just going to be the item in that category items rate at the index paths row. And then we can return that item. Now, only two more helper methods left. The next and second to last helper method we're going to need is one that's going to give us the index for a specific item at an index path. Now the reason we need this is that in our items array, the to-do items are going to be in no particular order. For example, we might have our two home items, followed by a work one, and then another home, and a work, and another home, and so on. And you'll notice how they, they're not necessarily ordered into their groups. So we need to go from an index path, say section 0, row 2, to an index in our self.items array. And we're going to need this whenever we're trying to change the information about a specific item, delete one perhaps, or move one from one place to another. Now the way we can do this is we're going to define a new helper method, and we're going to use again our other helper methods to aid in this. So it's going to return an integer, it's going to be an index, and we're going to call this method item index for index path. So the first thing we're going to do is actually get the item at the, this index path using our earlier helper method. Once we have this, we can get the index simply by looking in, by asking self items for the index of the object identical to that item. And then we, can then we can return that index. Our last helper method we, we need, and this is going to be for the functionality we're adding today to delete items, is to remove an item at a specific index path. To do this, we just need to get the index of that item using the method we just defined. And then we're going to tell our items array to remove object at index and that index we just retrieved. So these are the only helper methods we're going to need currently. And now we just need to make use of them. So the first place we need to make use of them is in number of rows in section. And to do that, we need to change from returning just all the items in the array to returning the number of items in the specific category. And the category is just going to be the item in our categories array at the index speci specified by the section. Next thing we have to do is in our self row method, we need to change how we get our specific item for an index path from just accessing it in the main array to using our help method item at index path to give us the item we need. The last one we need to change is did select row index path so that we, we've got this correct index for the item we're changing and we're modifying it and saving it correctly. The so first thing we have to do is get the index and we can use our earlier method for that. Get the index, main index for the index path. And then using this index we can get this item we want, make our modifications like we did earlier and then update and update the item in the main array uh, with our changes. Now that we've made our changes to did select row index path, there are only a couple of things left. First thing, we might want to change one of our default items that is in the work category, or we can just add ourselves a new to-do item. So we can see this is working. And the other method we need to implement so that we're able to tell which category our items are in is the title for header in section method uh, so that our table view will display the headers with the correct text. Title for header in section. And we can simply return here the item in the categories array at the index section because that stores all the names for our categories. Now there is one last thing we need to change, easily overlooked, but if you notice when we're creating our new item, we're currently inserting the row and index path in the first section and 
what's important is the row. We're always inserting it at the count number of items minus one. And the issue is, prior to making our category changes, there were always all the items in section zero. This might not any longer be the case. All that's going to be in section zero is our home items. So what we have to do is get the number of items in the home category. because that's where we're inserting our new item into, and that is going to be the row in that section. Excellent. And we run that, and we should notice our changes in effect. We should have uh, two items in the uh, home section and one in the work section. Excellent, and you'll notice how we can change and check them off also, all working nicely. And when we create a new to-do item, it'll automatically go into the home section. It's immediately inserted into the home section. Now, that's brilliant, we've sorted that, and we've got our nice categories for to-do items, and we can even add more if we so wish to. So we can have another section for shopping. At the moment, that's not gonna have any to-do items in, because we haven't had any, put any in there by default, but you can see it works also, and everything still works fine. So it's expandable, flexible, and you can add your own sections if you want, even let the user add their own. Now for now we're just going to keep it to the two, to keep it simple with this tutorial. You can go and experiment if you so wish yourself. Now the other thing we plan to do in this tutorial is allow the user to delete their to-do items. At the moment we're allowing them to check them off, but there may become a situation where they want to delete them also. So. What we need to do is implement a few of the table the view delegate question is the editing style for row index path. And this is where the table view requests uh, what edit editing style we want for a specific row. There are only two options, there's either insert or delete, and the one, surprisingly enough, that we want is the delete. There we go, and we're just simply gonna return our table view cell editing style delete. The other method we have to implement here is can edit row index path. So the table view knows that this row is editable. All our rows will be editable, so we can always return yes. And finally, last thing we need to do, and this is the one that actually does the work of deleting row, and that's commit editing style for row index path. Now we want to check to ensure the editing style is the delete style, it should always be, because that's the only editing style we're returning, but for good measure, we still have this statement in here, say perhaps you want to change something in the future, it's future proofed. Now to do this, we can simply call our already implemented help method, remove item index path, we have our index path, so that's easy as that, so we remove it from our data, backing data, and now we also want to animate it out of the table view too. So we can use delete rows index path, that index path and we're just going to use the automatic row animation. There we go, let's give this a run and we'll see it in action. So I'll delete, see it nicely animates out and it's all working nicely still. Brilliant. Now, the other thing we wanted to do is so that we had an edit item in the navigation bar, which would begin editing for the table view. So to do that, first thing we need to do is set the left bar button item on our navigation item. And we're not gonna use the system item, we're gonna use our own because we're gonna be changing the title of it between edit and done, depending on what state we're in. and it's gonna call a method we're gonna implement called toggle editing, like so. So we should probably implement that method now. So to toggle editing, we're gonna to set 
editing on our table view to the opposite of what it currently is and you'll notice how I've done that, I'll just use the exclamation mark in front of the current value of editing and I'll just flip the value so if it was no to start with it will then be there yes or if it was yes to start with it then we no and we want it to be animated now the other thing we need to do is change the title and style of the bar button item which can be sender in this case so that when it's when we've tapped it and it was originally edit it changed to done and it's bold and when it was done it changed to edit and it's just a plain style so we're just going to quit if statement we're just going to check the current state if it's if the table views editing and if it is we're going to set the title of the bar button item to done and we're going to set the style to the done style Otherwise, if we're not editing, we're going to set the item title to edit and the style to plain. And now if we run, we should be able to toggle editing on the table view and we'll get the little delete button on the left, which will then reveal our previously seen delete on the right. And again, it functions like it would if we were to swipe otherwise. Brilliant. So that's what we're going to cover in this tutorial. We've implemented categories and we've used section headers and we've also implemented editing, deleting rows in our table view. Next time we're going to tackle moving cells between categories so we can move an item which was previously in work into the home section. And we're also going to tackle using context menus so that we're able to duplicate our to-do items and perhaps even edit them. And that will be next time. So hope this tutorial has been informative and I'll see you then.